What's up? What's up? Hope everybody's doing amazing out there today. This is Wednesday. This is Wednesday, October 19th. It is about 1.41 p.m. here in always sunny Ohio. Hope everybody's doing amazing out there. Um, and I am into day uh, five. I, I believe day five of this uh, Membership Dawn's launch. And uh, I just want to do a quick... Uh, quick uh you know facebook live stream this is state of zero episode four thanks for joining what's up top boys how's it going man um i want to talk about membership dawns i want to talk about the actual launch itself uh i want to talk about things i learned from the launch um and uh before that what's up man what's up what's up everyone there's my uh, there's my leaderboard uh, there's my leaderboard uh, leader right now. I just log on. It's Aaron Chandran. He is the uh, leaderboard leader for uh, membership dons right now. He's crushing it. Absolutely crushing it. Uh, <laughs> I know, man. Cutting into the important stuff. <laughs> Anyways, uh, first pitch, right? First pitch of the uh, program, uh, epicconversions.com. Make sure you guys get over there, check out the blog, epicconversions.com. Just opened up a brand new membership area over there. It's called the Insiders Club. Basically, what that's all about is um, you get access to the last three Epic Conversions product releases, right? So, um, pretty cool. It's a monthly membership. It's only like 10 bucks a month pretty cool situation save a lot of money in that kind of a situation because you know my products go to 27 bucks after they launch after they launch for the first week they go up to 27 bucks so it's a pretty good deal if you don't want to think about it you just want to get the latest thing I just put out boom you can get it just like that simple monthly fee no big deal um, but I wanted to talk about something with you guys first and foremost uh, I wanted to give some shout outs and I wanted to talk about lifting people up um, first topic I want to talk about, and then after that, I'm going to get into uh, things that I did differently on my launch this time that could have contributed to me getting the deal of the day. Uh, things that I did uh, that, that probably contributed a little bit, and we'll talk about that. But before I get into that, I want to talk about these uh, shout outs, and I want to talk about lifting people up. Hey, what's up, Ant? How's it going, man? Um, so, first thing I want to talk about. You see a lot of people out there, you know, making fun of each other, talking bad about each other, you know, slanging dirt on each other. Um, I want you guys to know that um, I have done really well in internet marketing uh, by uh, trying to lift people up around me. Uh, I try to lift people up, um, and you know, listen, it's easy, you guys, to get down on yourselves when you don't feel like things are happening good enough for you. Uh, and you see it looks like everywhere around you really good things are happening for other people all these people are getting these great things happening to them and they're making all this money and it don't seem like it's happening for you it gets really easy to start slanging dirt on people and being bitter and being that kind of way um, I want you guys to uh, not do that I want you feel yourself getting envious of somebody else because they're doing so well you feel like you've been in the game longer than them or whatever and they're doing way better and like what's going on why can't you make things happen like that or whatever listen I want you to lift them up okay lift them up you know congratulate them on the job well done uh, put them on the pedestal they deserve it uh, lift them up okay when you start lifting people up it's gonna come back to you tenfold alright I promise you that it will you know, you can take that or you can leave it. That's advice that I live, um, and I know it works. It's worked for me. Um, you know, lift people up. You know, send nothing but love out there to other people, and that that'll come back to you. Um, that being said, it's easy, and that doesn't make you a bad person for being envious or, or being you know jealous uh, of what you perceive to be other people doing really well and you not doing so well. It doesn't make you a bad person for feeling that way. It's human nature, but fight it, fight it, send out positivity into the world, and that will come back to you tenfold, I promise you that. Uh, lift people up, man. Uh, so, that being said, let me give some shout outs. Uh, A-Run, like I said, A-Run's joining in, dude. A-Run's crushing it in my affiliate contest for uh, membership dons. He's absolutely killing it. He doesn't even launch on the weekends. He doesn't even promote on the weekends, I should say. 
And uh, he said, you know what, screw it, man. I'm just going to promote on. I'm just going to start this thing up this weekend. So he went in on it, um, even though he normally doesn't even promote on the weekend. So shout out to A-Run. Thanks a lot, man. Adam Payne, killing it on my leaderboard. He's number two. And, uh, you know, Adam Payne, he's been quiet. Um, he's been quietly just crushing it out there. So I appreciate you, Adam. Absolutely. What's up, Philip Lopez? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Adam's been killing it. Nathan Zadwarney. Nathan Zadwarney is a guy who who was uh, like kind of retiring. He was like, dude, I'm I'm, I'm out. I'm done. I'm me I'm not. I'm done messing with this stuff. I'm gonna go back to Iowa and be a farmer. I totally made that up. <laughs> I totally made that part up. But uh, you know, Nathan was out, and uh, you Nathan said, hey Cam, you know what, man? I, I like this course. Uh, I, I like what you're doing, man. I'm just gonna go ahead and promote this anyway. So, you know, maximum respect to Nathan for uh, coming on board and promoting. Uh, these cats, um, I sent them review copies. Some of them, I, I like to think I sent all these guys review copies. Um, but uh, if I didn't, I apologize. I should have. Uh, but they, uh, they, they're all their own bosses. They got their own minds. They, uh, they decided they wanted to promote. I didn't pull anybody's arm, you guys. I'm not a JV manager. I don't, um, I don't like, pull people's arms. I ask people if they want to promote. I laugh about it. Say it's basically like I'm like the neighbor who goes around to like all of my neighbors' houses asking for a cup of sugar, and that's basically what it feels like when you're asking people to promote your stuff. Um, these cats just happen to be like, yeah, cool, I'm in. Let me let's promote this thing. So I appreciate that. Christy Childs, another one. Christy Childs is awesome, man. Every time I put out a product, Christy Childs is always coming around wanting to promote for me. And she always pushes units. She always does an awesome job. So I appreciate you, Christy Childs. You're amazing. Um, you know, another one who always does that, Hurricane Dexter. You guys know Hurricane Dexter. His partner, Justin Opey. Those cats always coming around wanting to promote stuff, you know. Thanks, Lena. I appreciate you. Uh, that, those cats always coming around wanting to promote stuff. Uh, Delilah Taylor. Delilah Taylor came on board to promote this for me. You know, Delilah Taylor uh, actually mentioned this on her Preciprocation Sunday uh, live video stream, which was really awesome, man. She mentioned my product along with people like, you know, Luke McGuire and Simon Harris. And those are really big fish, man, to, to have my product out there mentioned in the same sentence with those things. It was a. Uh, it was quite an honor for me, man. So I really appreciate that, Delilah. I appreciate you being on board with that and uh, promoting. So that's that's amazing. Alessandro Zamboni came out and promoted for uh, Membership Don's Maximum Respect. I don't even think I sent Alessandro a review copy. I didn't, ex like I said, I suck at JV management. What's up, Kevin? <laughs> uh, but uh, he came on board, promoted. Matthew P. Griffin came on board, promoted. Uh, I didn't know Matthew. Matthew's a new new friend, so I just I just kind of met Matthew. He came out, crushed it huge. Um, a lot of other people came out and crushed. Uh, Aunt Carter came on board, promoted. I think Aunt's hanging out right now. Aunt, thanks a lot, dude. I appreciate you coming on board and promoting for me, man. Maximum respect. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Uh, Janelle Livett. You guys know Janelle Livett. I interviewed her on YouTube channel. Uh, she does a lot of click funnel stuff. She came out promoted. John Chow came out promoted. Not the big John Chow that you guys are thinking about. <laughs> I'm talking about solo ad John Chow, who just came out with a product not too long ago called the Email Architect. He came out and promoted for me. Awesome job, man. Um, and, and a bunch of other people. But let's let's take that promotional stuff for a minute. Um, and I'm not just talking about pushing numbers for a minute. I want to talk about some other people that helped. Uh, kind of promote this product. These are people who might not have pushed anything. They didn't push any units, but they still talked about my stuff on Facebook and in their circles. People like John Marquez, Philip Lopez, uh, John Davin, Stuart Walker. Stuart Walker has a Facebook group with over 15 or 20,000 people. And you know, he, he gave me his vote of confidence on membership dons in his Facebook group, which was huge. The email architect was great. You're right, Philip. I totally agree. John Chow killed that product. Um, Philip Lopez and I were talking about the email architect, you guys. If you don't know what we're talking about, it's a course that John Chow put out on Warrior Plus. It's still there. It's on Warrior Plus. It talks about how he got over 14,000 emails on a list in 11 months. And he shows you how to do it in the email architect. It's a very good product. Check it out if you're interested in solo ads. Um, 
Stuart Walker always, always, always uh, helps me with promotion. Stuart Walker is a big time guy. He runs nichehacks.com. He doesn't always promote for me like affiliate marketing promotion because he's busy doing other stuff. When I launched Membership Dons, he was promoting Michael Cheney's new course, but he still gave me shout outs and votes of confidence in his Facebook group, which were huge for me, man. Um, Big Todd Boyce, always there for positive comments, liking my stuff when I put it out. Thanks a lot, Todd. Appreciate you, man. Uh, John Rodham, Shelly Turner, Big Alec Casa. Alacasa coming up. Everybody knows Alacasa. Alacasa is busy doing his own promotional stuff over on this side, but Alacasa was still around for likes when I posted stuff, commenting when I posted stuff. I appreciate all that stuff, you guys. That kind of social proof uh, helps me out a lot. I really appreciate it when you guys do that. Uh, Bill Hugel, man. I post things. Big Bill Hugel comes around and likes my stuff and comments and stuff, and that's huge for someone like me. Bill Hugel is a next-level guy. And uh, it means a lot to me that he comes around and does stuff like that. That's awesome. So, uh, Brendan Mace. Brendan Mace, you guys might or might not know Brendan Mace. Brendan Mace uh, just launched a zero-hour work week and uh, absolutely crushed it, man. He just got deal of the day not too long ago, just like a week ago, I think. He absolutely crushed it with zero-hour work week. And uh, Brendan Mace came around, was congratulating, thumbs up on my stuff. So I appreciate that, Brandon. Uh, Ken Bluntman. Can't forget Ken. Ken's always coming around, saying hi, liking my stuff. Ken reviewed uh, Membership Dons, um, and he did a really awesome job. I appreciate, and I, I'm probably forgetting a lot of people, because a lot of people came around and said hi, checked out the course, reviewed it, all that good stuff. And uh, I appreciate all you guys, man. So if I forgot you... Feel free to call me a pukehead in the comments section because I deserve it. <laughs> uh, anyways, that's it, man, for shout outs. Um, let's move on, man. Let's move on. Uh, let's move on to topic two. Uh, first off, I want to say we're talking about membership dons here. The course I just released is still out there, still on sale for $9.97. What's up, Shelly? I shouted you out. You're awesome. Um, it's on sale for $9.97 right now. It'll be on sale for $9.97 until uh, Saturday. Then it'll go up to $27. Bucks. Um, but uh, membership dons, you can get it over there. I'll put a link. Let me uh, let me uh, let me pull this up, you guys. I'll put a link up here for you. Um, hold on a second, guys. And what is up with people not being prepared? Why why would you not? Why would you not be prepared, Cam? What, what's wrong with you? There's a link to my blog. If anyone wants to check out my blog, check it out. I try to put good stuff on there. And I uh, got a new Insiders Club, like I said, um, where you can get access to front-end products that I released. Um, and let me put a link to the topic of the hour, Membership Dons. I'll put a link in there for you. You guys on the fence looking for something to pick up membership Don still available at 997 it's a good product highly converting product deal of the day winner uh, real good products gonna help you learn how to create membership sites so check it out um, so let me talk to you guys about this deal of the day thing and what I learned um, after uh, getting deal of the day and what I learned about product launch and first of all I just want to say number one you can't control stuff like deal of the day you don't control stuff like that, okay? Um, I'll tell you guys what I do. Um, every time I get done launching a product, at the end of the launch cycle, when I get done with this uh, launch cycle, I look at my numbers, I sit down, I print out all my numbers, and I look, I sit down at the table and I look at them, and I, and I look at the things that I did this time around, and what I did well, and what I'd like to improve upon, okay? Now, I can tell you guys, when I launched, uh, when I launched uh, Offer Kings a month and a half ago, I sat down at the table and I looked at my numbers for Offer Kings and I said, "Okay, here's what I liked about this launch. Here's what, uh, here's what I didn't like. Here's what needs to be improved upon." And I do that at the end of every single launch. What's up, Leah Musto? How you doing, girl? Um, I do that at the end of every single launch. So when I sat down for Offer Kings a month and a half ago, one of the big things that really stuck out in my mind, what really made me mad, was my conversion rate on the sales page. It was, the first few days, it was like 
and I finally I changed it and I got it boosted up to 11% but look I mean when you got affiliates coming on board and you want them to promote for you you need your sales page to convert better than that because you're not doing them any favors as affiliate marketers you know when we promote products there's one thing that's guaranteed to happen one, th one thing, not over here, like right here. One thing is guaranteed to happen. We're going to lose subscribers, okay? When we promote for you, we're going to lose subscribers. We're going to have to make those subscribers back up. We're either going to pay for them or we're going to pay for them in time pulling new subscribers in. But that's guaranteed. So the second thing that needs to happen for affiliate marketers is we need to be able to make money off of that product launch. And I'm not even talking about like, yeah, we might be friends, it might be cool, we're friends, but business is business. At the end of the day, if we can't make money doing this, we go back to work for somebody who knows how to make money. So what happens is, as affiliate marketers, we need to be able to make money off, off of promotion. So that means that your sales page needs to be right, or else you're not doing me any favors. So what happens is, with the Offer Kings product, I had a the situation was I had a great product, but the sales page was not good. It, it was not converting very well. So that was one thing that I really wanted to fix. You know, what's up, John Marquez? How's it going, man? I was just talking about you a few minutes ago. Um, big John Marquez in the house. Christy Charles in the house. I was just talking about you. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, yeah, so the sales page needed to be fixed. So that was the first thing that I fixed. Um, the first thing I fixed was sales page. And I'll tell you guys exactly how I fixed it. Instead of listening to all these other copywriting guides and all these other um, you know, experts and stuff on copywriting, what I did was I went through my purchases section. Now, I hope you guys realize that we're all copywriting experts. Let me ask you guys, how many sales pages have you guys looked at? How many sales pages have you guys looked at in the last 12 months? Probably hundreds. Probably hundreds. I've looked at hundreds. You know, so, I mean, we're all experts on sales pages. So, so here's the bottom line. Look through your purchases history and see what's moving you. See what's moving you in your sales page history, what in your purchase history. What inspired you to buy something? So that's what I did. I went back to the drawing board. I took all the copywriting knowledge and like threw it away, figured out what was inspiring me to buy things, and I wanted to base my sales page around that kind of a situation. And I, I kind of landed on a, a course by Jeremy Kennedy called Guaranteed Subscribers, and the sales page really stuck out to me. It was minimalistic. It was a simple video and a simple little toggle button that said, click here to get this now or whatever, and you click on it, and it toggles down a buy button. And I thought that was, to me, it was perfect, you know? And, and listen, when you're launching a product, your opinion's the only one that matters, I was launching the product, I thought that was ingenious, I loved it. So I wanted to go with my gut on that, and uh, I modeled my sales page after uh, Kennedy's Guaranteed Subscriber sales page, and, uh, and it worked for me. I loved it, I was comfortable with it. When I see sales pages, I don't like to read a bunch of copy. What's up, Leah, how are you doing? Yeah, I don't like to read a bunch of copy. Very good points, John, very good points. Um, I don't like to read a bunch of copy. I found myself skimming through the copy, skimming through the copy. And the more copy I read, the more gimmicky it all looks. <laughs> this is a bunch of gimmicky stuff. I'm like, whoa, what is all this? <laughs> what is this product? What does it do? Give me the back of the book summary. I want to know what it is. I want to know what it does. I want to know how much it costs, okay? That's what I want to know. So the, the, the long sales copy, the long form sales letters didn't work for me. So, uh... I, I needed to be true to myself and find what worked for me, and that minimalist uh, sales page worked very well for me. Once I got the sales page done, I leveraged the sales page. I was proud of the sales page. I loved the way it looked, and I leveraged it by showing it off to people. And at first, I thought that was a mistake. Hey, thank you, man. Thanks, Kevin. First, I thought that was a mistake. I should have like duplicated the sales page and sent people to a... Uh, a copy of the sales page so it wouldn't affect my conversions uh, leading up to the launch but whatever man I just went with it uh, I love Batman too Kevin absolutely man awesome uh, 
Anyways, whatever. So that's what I did, man. Uh, the other thing I did was I added a Facebook chat box on my sales page underneath that little toggle down to buy. So it's a very minimalistic sales page, a video, a buy button, and a comment box for Facebook. Um, what else? What else? What else? So there's the sales page thing. I leveraged the sales page before launch. I was trying to build anticipation for my product. Okay, I was throwing my sales page out there because I was proud of it, and I felt like the sales page would get people interested in the product. I thought it was a cool sales page, and I thought it would build interest in the product, and I think that worked pretty good. Um, I took a little bit of a hit because I was getting clicks to my sales page before I even launched, and what happened was that's affecting conversion rates. So just keep that in mind when you do that. You're, if you leverage that sales page like that, you can, you're, you're starting out a little bit in the hole with your conversion rates, which is crazy because one of my goals for my last, for my last product was to increase conversions. But I, I gambled my conversion rates by leveraging my sales page, but I feel like it was worth it. I was invested in my customers. I feel like if I put the thing out there and I invest in my customers, it would come back to me. And it did. It worked out really good. Um, uh, second thing I did, uh, when I got done with the Offer Kings launch, I said, dude, you suck at JV recruitment. You either get, need to get better at JV recruitment for this next launch, or you need to hire another JV manager. So get over yourself and either hire a JV manager or get better at JV recruitment, because this ain't working. This sucks. That, that's what I said. So with this, uh, with this uh, launch... I wasn't ready to hire another JV manager. I wasn't ready to do that yet. I didn't want to do it. Um, so what I did was I targeted 50 joint venture partners. I targeted people who had promoted for me before. I targeted people who I had promoted before. Okay, And uh, that's what I did. Uh, so I, And not all of you guys might be able to do that because maybe you're new. Maybe you haven't promoted a bunch of people before. I happened to be in that situation where I had promoted a lot of people um, and a lot of people had promoted for me so I had people to reach out to. Thank you, thank you Lee, I appreciate that. <clears throat> I, uh, I, I, so I had 50. I made an Excel document with 50 targeted affiliates. When I sent them emails, guys, I went right through Facebook on all 50 of them. I went right through Facebook on all 50 of them. I did all my JV recruitment through Facebook, and when I sent them messages, I sent them a, I sent them access to the product, and I sent them a um, JV page, JV page access to the product right there. You guys, if you want people to promote for you, like don't don't get stingy with the review copies. If you're targeting a, an affiliate, send them a review copy because they don't have time. Guys, I'm just like a mid-level guy. And people come at me every day wanting me to promote stuff. So if you want someone to promote something for you, make sure you give them JV Tools page. Make sure you give them access to the product right off the bat. Anyways, I'm not a JV manager. I'm just telling you what, what worked for me. Um, but I gave them access right off the bat. Um, I'll tell you the biggest JV recruitment strategy is success. It, 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 when your product starts coming off the shelves when people start buying it then a lot more affiliates start getting on board so but these are things you can do leading up to the launch I targeted 50 target however many you want whoever you specifically handpick and target I would go ahead and send them review access and a link to the JV page okay a third thing I did um, this isn't kind of new this is something I continue to do because it was working really well for me but posting your launch on Munchai, you guys, I still get hundreds, I, I still get between 100 and 200 unique visitors to my blog every month because of Munchai. They're coming directly from Munchai. Munchai will drive traffic to your properties. So make sure you're listing your product launch on Munchai, okay? I can't speak for the other, I listed on several JV uh, platforms, but this is the one where I see a lot of traffic coming from as Munchai. So make sure that you're listening on Munchai when you're going to launch a product. Okay. Um, number four thing, and I think this is this is the biggest thing, probably one of the biggest things, is a uh, quicker turnaround time. You got to have a quicker turnaround time. I launched Affiliate Rising, and then three months later, I launched Offer Kings. That wasn't good enough. 
I launched Affiliate Rising three months later. I launched All for Kings. That was three months in between product launches. That's okay. It's not okay if you really want to like be relevant in the launch space. If you if you want to be someone who launches products, and this is one of the things you do to make money, um, you, you know you got to stay relevant. You're talking about ten or fifteen products coming out a day, right? So there's a lot going on. Think about Facebook for a minute, and you think about the Facebook scene and people who are in, in people who are in the internet marketing scene on Facebook, you guys know it's a scene. It's a scene. There's a group of people. You see the same names and the same faces popping up. Now, if you dropped out for just a month, just 30 days dropping out, okay, you're like ancient history. No one even, who, who was that cat? Oh, I remember him from a long time ago. <laughs> Things move fast. Things move fast, okay? Things move fast on Things move fast in this space. In the internet marketing space, things move fast. So um, one of the things I wasn't happy with was the slow turnaround time. And, you know, I had bigger marketers, seven-figure guys, tell me, Cam, you need to increase your turnaround time on these product launches. And uh, so I knew that was a problem already, but I just kind of committed to it recently to, hey, look, I need to improve turnaround time on these products. So... From uh, Offer Kings to uh, Membership Dons, I cut it down to a month and a half. So it was a it was a it was a quicker turnaround time. And what do you know? Quicker turnaround time, Membership Dons grabs deal of the day. So you know, I, I believe that was part of it. Quicker turnaround time made a difference. So um, take it how you want to take it. But I think that if you're going to be in the product launch game you need to be able to turn around pretty quickly. So you want to try to aim for a month, month and a half tops on turnaround time for these product launches. Um, now, I, I'm, I'm saying that to you, and I do other things too. I got my name out there, my face out there with YouTube videos. I do Facebook stuff. You guys see me right now doing Facebook stuff. I do blogs. I do stuff, other stuff too. But I still say if you're launching products, and I haven't always said that. You know, My, my views changed a little bit on that. But I would say at this point in the game, if you're launching products, you want to make money launching products, you need, you need to have a quicker turnaround time. Every month, month and a half, you, know, you need to try to have something relevant to say that's going to help people. Um, anyways, uh, next thing I did, um, I gave out 30 review copies of my product. Okay, I gave out 30 review copies, and to give them out, I went to three Facebook groups. I went to the Alex Jeffries marketing with Alex Facebook group. I went to the Niche Hacks Facebook group, uh, Stuart Walker's Niche Hacks, and then I went to my own Facebook group, uh, Epic Conversions Private Mastermind, uh, and you guys are welcome to join that if you're not already members in there. Uh, but uh, I just said, hey, I got 10, 10 copies of my newest product coming out, boom, boom, boom. I gave out 10 copies in each one, and uh, I gave about 30, 35 copies, and I asked people right there and I did this all through Facebook, and I asked people right there, "Hey, listen, man, if you like it, you know, if, if you know, I appreciate your feedback on it. Here's the sales page for Membership Dons. There's a Facebook comment box right there. If you could just leave a comment on the product right there, um, that would be amazingly helpful to me. And that's what I did. So I made it easy for them. I gave them a link to the sales page for Membership Dons, and I made it a Facebook." box right there and I believe those things uh, contributed to um, people leaving more reviews and more comments on the thing they knew where to go to leave their feedback a lot of times we give review copies out for people and we're not clear about where we want the feedback we're not clear we don't direct them where to go to give us feedback so they don't know you know but if you give them the review copy hey thanks a lot Earl I appreciate you man thanks a lot if you, uh, if you give them a review copy, make sure you tell them where to go to leave feedback, okay? That, that's a thing that a lot of people overlook. They don't tell them where to go to leave feedback. It's, it's a big deal. <clears throat> Thank you, Lynn. Thank you. Appreciate that. It was a good product. You're right. I'm patting myself on the back on that one. That was a, that was a good product, Cam. <laughs> Leah had a great product uh, a few months ago. Um... And I, 
for some reason I can't remember the name of it. It was about list building. It was a great product. She does she did several amazing interviews in that product, and I really loved it. So if you guys are interested in list building uh, and building your list, uh, PM Leah because she's got a great product on list building. So check that out. Um, but anyways. Uh, 30 review copies is what I gave out for Membership Dons. And listen, it's only natural when you're launching a product, you guys. You just worked really hard on this product. You're afraid if you give out all these review copies, people are going to be spreading it around and no one's going to buy it off you. Okay? It's natural to feel that way. But look, if you got a good system in place for their feedback, okay, then you need to just roll with it. Bite the bullet give out a bunch of review copies, give out about 30 review copies, give them a place to leave feedback, tell them you appreciate them taking the time to look through your product. That's, uh, that's, that's what I would do. It's important. All right. The feedback makes a difference. Matter of fact, I'll tell you something about that feedback. Um, so membership Don's got deal of the day yesterday. Okay. Well, I, I saw Shane Nathan's uh, promotion for membership Don's and he actually took some of that feedback from my sales page when he did his promotion. So the guys who decide about deal of the day for Warrior Plus, they're looking at the feedback. They're looking at the feedback on your sales page and if you put it right there on the sales page then they can find it really easily. So keep that in mind man, the social proof is a, is a big deal and it's not that hard to get it man. All you gotta do is go to some of these um, Facebook groups that are in your space and uh, just be like, hey man, I got a new product coming out, man. I'd love to give out some review copies. I got I got 10 of them. Boom, I got 10 review copies. Um, add that little bit of scarcity onto it, okay? Because you're going to get people a little bit more interested in looking at your thing, all right? Add that scarcity onto it. So don't just say, hey man, I got a bunch of review copies. Who wants a review copy? <laughs> I'm the I am Oprah. <laughs> You get a review copy. You get a review copy. You get a review copy. <laughs> Don't do that. I got 10 review copies. All right. I got 10. Who wants one? Boom. Toss them out like put a little scarcity on it, but give out the review copies. Give them a place to leave a review. Um, last thing I want to talk about when it came to this membership Dawn's thing was uh, uh, market research. So when I did my market research, I want you guys to know my market research didn't say, hey, do a product on membership sites. My market research didn't say, hey, everyone cares about membership sites right now. Do a product on that. It didn't say that. My market research told me I should put out another product on affiliate marketing. That's what my market research was telling me. However, I happen to know that the right thing to talk about was membership sites for me because... Uh, Membership sites are uh, a very sustainable, rock-solid way to make money that I have used to make money. And I knew that I was going to be opening a new membership site to make money. It made sense to me. So then the problem became, all right, why, isn't people, why aren't people caring about membership sites right now? I knew why. Because membership sites aren't sexy. People think about membership sites and they're like, oh my God, dude, I got to come up with uh, content every single month. I got to figure out how to start this thing up and open it up and some kind of weird, crazy plug-in to make this thing work. I don't know what's going on. Forget this membership site thing. I'm just going to launch a simple product. I'm just going to launch a special report. <laughs> you know, and that's, that's kind of why it, membership sites seem too complicated too hard too much of a long game strategy and people trying to figure out how to make that quick money people trying to figure out how to do it fast so it wasn't that i couldn't launch a product on membership sites it was that i needed to connect the dots for people on how they could do this easily and make it work for them and see results fairly quickly so it was a positioning issue it wasn't the membership sites sucked I'm telling you guys right now, you can launch a product on whatever you want to launch a product on, regardless. What's up, Wilson Gupta? What's going on? Um, you can launch a product on whatever you want to launch it on. It doesn't matter what the market research says, but you got to understand your market. You got to understand what they want, right? And you need to angle that. You need to angle, you need to position your product to fit what they're looking for, okay? See? I knew membership sites was a good thing to help people, but I needed to position it in a way that connected the dots for them. 
because like crazy plugins where you got to decide among like 10 different membership plugins and like having to put out all this crazy content every month that ain't that ain't appealing to nobody that don't even appeal to me <laughs> so you got to position it in a way where it makes sense for people um, and that's what I did man I went with my gut on the market research thing yeah yeah most people are decent and don't share out the review copies and that's true that's true um, I will say it only takes one bad apple to ruin your day though <laughs> on the back end of that uh, I, had a, I had a couple of products end up on the black hat forum um, I naively I naively uh, assumed that I wasn't a big enough name for people to be pirating my products and putting them on the black hat forum that was a complete uh, idi idiocy. <laughs> that wasn't true at all. Um, you don't have to have a big name uh, for people to pirate your junk and put it on the Black Hat forum. Um, that, that, that's a that's probably a conversation for another day. To that, I would say, hey, it's not a bad idea to get a little bit of security on your product launches, but that don't have anything to do with handing out review copies. And I think Leah is absolutely right. Don't let the the fear of piracy. Um, keep you from handing out review copies. It's, it's important to hand out your review copies and lead people to a place where they can leave you good feedback on your products. It's, it's very important. Um, and that's that's cool for that. And uh, that leads me into my third topic, my last topic of the day. Uh, okay, how do you, because I got this question, okay, how do I uh, do something like this if I have no audience and no experience and I'm brand new? Because people were asking me about that deal of the day thing, and they were asking me how they could do it if they're brand new and they don't have any experience and stuff like that. And uh, I will say, uh, the first thing, uh, you cannot control results, okay? And I never worry about, uh, <laughs> I'm indecent, just saying. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, listen. You can't control results. Uh, I don't. I don't worry about controlling results. Um, you can control systems, and you can control benchmarks, and that's what I do. That's what I was telling you guys. Uh, after I get done with this membership dons product launch, um, I'm gonna sit down at my table. I'm gonna print off my numbers. I'm gonna figure out what I did right and what I did wrong. Now this deal of the day thing, it adds an element to it. So that means I did a lot right. Okay, so it's important for me to identify what I did that mattered, what was effective that mattered, what made a difference, what didn't make a difference. It's important for me to figure it out. Um, and then, uh, you know, buy traffic, your method is solid. Wait till you see the numbers. Yep, yep, that's good, John Marquez. I like it. I like it. Um, yeah, guys, you know, I, uh, I'll sit down at the table, I'll examine what I did. And I'll uh, and I'll uh, adjust for next time, um, you know. And that, that's that's the way the way I'll do it. Now I can tell you right now, just a couple of things that I see with this product launch that I'm going to be changing for the next one. Uh, my my launch cycle was too long. I have to me a seven day launch cycle is a little bit too long. I think the public interest is about four to five days. I think membership dons can hold the public interest for about four to five days before it really gets just plowed over with new stuff and new things that people are interested in so I want my launch cycle to be cut down a little bit um, right now I got a 15 15 front-end unit minimum um, for affiliate contest so affiliates have to push at least 15 units to be eligible for contest prizes uh, I might change that it just depends I'm not sure I'm not sure but those are things I'm looking into for next launch um, there's a couple other things I'm looking into but I, it's too soon for me to really talk about specifics about what I'm gonna be changing about my launches um, membership dance is gonna be evergreen it is absolutely gonna be evergreen after Saturday membership dance is gonna go to 27 bucks and affiliates uh, commission is gonna go down to 50% on the front end so what that means is even though you're going to go down to 50%, you're still going to be making more than what you're making right now at 100% with it capped at 997 if that makes sense. So that's what's going to happen with membership dons. That's a model that's worked really good for me. Either way, the sales go down to trickle-in sales. You know, it's going to be trickle-in sales. After launch week, after the public interest moves on, 
Um, sales kind of dwindle off and it's kind of trickling sales. A few sales here, a few sales there. Um, and it don't matter if I got it at $27 or I leave it at 10 bucks. It's, it don't matter. So I let, I take it to $27, take commission down to 50%. Affiliates make more. Um, I make some, um, the customers get good quality products and everybody's happy. It works good. Also that maintains the value of my product. My product stays valuable and it leaves me open to uh, have a sale in a, in a few months or whatever. So that's that's kind of what's up with that. Um, but I'll just say, guys, you know, you can't control results. You know, you can't control results, so don't even try. Um, you can control your systems. You can control your benchmarks. Look at what you've done. See what's worked and what didn't work, what you weren't happy with, and set goals for yourself for the next one. Keep the turnaround time quick. Quicker turnaround time. Don't try to like, you know, the, the goal is to put out a product that's really going to help somebody. The goal is not to have the, the most epic, most amazing product of all time. That's not the goal. The goal is not to have the most fancy, uh, best product of all time. The goal is to put out a product that's really going to help someone accomplish something. And then the secondary goal is to have a sales page that really inspires people and speaks to them. Okay, so and for that to happen, you need to make a sales page that inspires and speaks to you. So, anyways, I think that's about it. If you guys want to know more about what I'm doing, check out epicconversions.com. Check out the Insiders Club that I just opened up. You can get access to my front end products. The last three front end products that I just released are available in the Epic Conversions Insiders Club area. Uh, you can get that for the right bull price of ten bucks a month. That's not very much. I like to keep stuff low. I like to undercharge and over deliver. That's been my motto since the beginning. So that's that's just how I like to do it. Some people say I don't charge enough for things, um, and I can respect that opinion. However, I'm I'm interested in uh, not just taking people's money. I'm interested in like helping people. Not everybody has a zillion dollars to invest in coaching. Not everybody has you know, $50 a month to invest in a membership program. But most people can swing 10 bucks a month to try to educate themselves. So that's a good price point for the people that I'm trying to help. So it's all good. That's, that's why I price things the way I do. So anyways, that's all I got. I've rambled on enough. I hope this has been helpful to you guys. Get out there, launch your products, make some money. Hit me up by email, camgenicspro at gmail.com. Hit me up on Facebook. See you guys in the next one. Peace, everybody.